We gather in the presence of God to celebrate the most significant event in the history of the whole world, the fulfillment of God's own promise to mankind from the beginning, the undoing of the curse of death and the defeat of the cause of death, namely sin. It is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from death. He did not die for himself. He died the death of Adam and Eve and all of their descendants. He died your death. After three days in a cold tomb of death, he arose boldly and to this day lives and rules the universe. The fact of his resurrection is a celebration of faith. This victory is assured to all who believe. Though we still sin and though we die, by faith in Jesus, the living Lord, sin is forgiven and taken away. And death becomes but the gate to our own resurrection to eternal life. And I invite the congregation to stand and face the processional cross as we process in <laughs> singing, Jesus Christ is risen today.
our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And let us ever walk with Jesus to see the depths of his love, to behold the gift of his forgiveness, to gaze upon the heights of his grace, to marvel at the magnitude of his mercy. We need not be afraid. For Christ, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Faithful, Faithful Lord, with me am I. I shall follow where you guide. Forgive me, O Lord, when my besetting sins entangle me and completely surround me. Who will rescue me? Forgive me, Lord, when I am so eager to get but so reluctant to give, so ready to receive your gifts, but so unwilling to bear the cross. Who will rescue me? Forgive me, merciful Father, when I avoid making any commitment to you, when I doubt that you really see my sin, when I disobey your commandments and am satisfied with only living for myself. Who will rescue me from this body? Forgive me, O oh God, when I am quick to find fault, but resentful when someone points out my faults, when I am so soon at play, but so late in prayer. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Father, forgive me when I rejoice in the temporary, but think little of the eternal. When I am so fond of being idle, but show little passion for helpful service. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on the fact that our sin is great, but our risen Christ's love is greater. Hear the good news. Jesus walked to places of rejection, suffering, torment, and death for you. Jesus was determined to go to Gethsemane, and Gabbatha, and Golgotha for you. That's why Jesus forgives you completely and loves you eternally. And so know that your sins are forgiven because of his death for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty God and Father, through, our, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And so here at Trinity, we have a memory verse that we have, uh, that we commit to memory each month. And so our memory verse uh, this month comes from Romans chapter 5. Uh, that reminds us that, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, and it is through Jesus that we are reconciled, that we are given that forgiveness and life uh, because of what Christ uh, did for us this week. Uh, but more importantly, that he rose from the dead. And so this morning, we're going to say this uh, verse twice. Uh, and so just uh, repeat after, or follow along. But God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Romans 5, 8, and 11. And one more time. But God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Romans 5, 8, and 11. 
And our Old Testament reading for this Easter Sunday comes from the book of Job, the 19th chapter. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold not another, my, haint, my heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And this is the word of the Lord. Be we continue with our next hymn, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. I invite all children to come and join us for a children's message this morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. Um, I have a question. How many of you like to do Easter egg hunts? Okay. Um, what What do you do on an Easter egg hunt? Cool. You find Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, now, what do you hope those Easter eggs are filled with? Candy, money. June. All right, well, June said some of them are empty like the tomb, and I think my job here is done. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for stealing all of my thunder. Um, you know, that might be a better idea. Anything else? 
Okay, that's it. Thank you. All right, so we like to have candy and money and maybe little toys in the Easter eggs, right? Yeah, that's fun. Um, how would you feel if you went on an Easter egg hunt and all of the eggs were empty? And you, like, you didn't get anything at the end of it. Would you like that? No. No. That wouldn't be very fun, would it? You just give the eggs back and then you're done? All right, well, let's see. I brought some eggs here. Let's see what kind of fun prizes I got. All right, oh, that one's cracked open. All right, how about this pink one? Who thinks they know what is it? Who knows what's in here? You know what? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, all of the eggs are empty because Jesus' tomb is empty. Good job, okay? Good job, June. All right, so I'm feeling real great. <laughs> so in the next story, we are going to hear from the Bible about the women going to the tomb. Now, where, um, what had happened after Jesus died on the cross? Yes, they brought his body and put him in a tomb because he had died. And so they put him in a tomb and they put a huge rock in front of the door. It was oval shaped, according to June, which is probably right. So um, they, so they closed Jesus. That's what the movie said. So <laughs> I'm having deja vu. <laughs> I remember June hijacking my Easter children's message a couple years ago, so <laughs> on brand. All right, so Jesus was laid in a tomb, and um, his body laid there for a few days. And so the women went to the tomb on Sunday morning because they wanted to see where Jesus' body was. And so, yeah, they expected Jesus' body to be there. And so what do you think... There were angels. Yeah, not fairies. There were angels there. And do you know what the angel said? Do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. Where did Jesus go? You're right. He went to his disciples. He had risen from the dead, and he went to go see his disciples. So the angel said to the women, go and talk to the disciples and tell them that Jesus is alive. And so they went into, and we're going to go to the disciples, and they saw Jesus along the way. And Jesus said, tell everyone that I am alive. And so the women went, and Jesus met with his disciples. So that happened a long time ago, right? Yeah. So um, do you think we should just be happy that Jesus is alive and go about our Easter egg hunts and all of that? Or do you think we should be like the women and we should tell people that Jesus is alive? Right, because he's, he's not dead anymore, is he? No, he's, he is alive, and so that's what we celebrate today. And we can tell people that Jesus is alive. So, like, uh, maybe sometimes the eggs are empty. If you came to our Easter egg hunt last week, some of the eggs were empty. But it reminds us that Jesus' tomb is empty, and that's good news, right? We want to, sh thank you. We want to share that with everyone. Okay, all right. Let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your death. Thank you for your resurrection, so that we have the hope and promise of eternal life. Help us to be bold in our faith to share your love, so that other people may know that you are alive. In your name, we pray. Amen. And out of respect for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand if you are able. And let us say the verse together. Alleluia. Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. Alleluia. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, 
For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priest all that had taken place. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We can do with our next hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may be seated. Amen. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Easter is supposed to be a time of great joy. Hallelujahs, flowers, music, celebration. But from our reading this morning, we see that Easter starts out with fear. Great fear. False evidence 
about what they expected. They expected to find a tomb with Jesus' body there. They find out that is not the case. And so fear, what is fear? Well, fear can be lots of things for us, but fear whispers in our ears that maybe there's trouble out there. And so with fear, sometimes we maybe not, we don't sleep very well. Maybe we don't whistle while we work for fear. So we continue on with our lives in fear. Fear attacks us with two words. What if? What if I don't close the sale? What if I don't get the bonus? What if she doesn't love me? What if my kids have crooked teeth for the rest of their lives and have to go to the orthodontist four times? Not that it ever happened to your pastor. I don't have crooked teeth anymore. Thank the Lord. But what if those crooked teeth keep them from having friends, a career, a spouse? What if they end up homeless, sitting on a corner? holding the cardboard sign that says, my parents never fixed my crooked teeth. <laughs> what if? What if? What if? And so fear twists us around. It, it makes our eyes twitch. It, it makes our blood pressure rises. Our, our heart aches. And we begin to sweat. And so maybe... We, we try to numb our fear with, with six-packs and, and food binges and, and too much TV. We express our fear in anger and, and silent stares, and, and we are both experts at both of those. And so we look at, at this story that we hear this morning, and Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, knows all about fear. For she has just witnessed her only son die an excruciating death, as we talked about on Good Friday, on the cross. And, he, and she sees him breathe his last and, and die on that cross. And the disciples, too, know about fear. For when Jesus needed them the most, they run away. And they are now in hiding because they are fearful of the Jews and what they will do to them. Because they just saw what the Jews did to Jesus. And so they are locked away in fear. And so it is easy to choose fear. False evidence that, that appears to be real over faith, over faith. Forsaking all that we know. But hear these words. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What, what maybe looks like world ending to the disciples and to Mary is life-giving to them. It is life-giving to us. For he has taken away our sin. He has died a death that we needed to die. And he has overcome them. That's because Jesus is our Redeemer. And Redeemer creates beauty from ashes. And so would you rather live by faith or fear? Because here's the angel's promise to the women. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. 
just as he said. We can trust in what Jesus says. He does what he says he will do. Jesus says, I took away your sin. I conquered death. I am alive bodily and eternally. And I am coming again to perfect your body and to restore the entire creation. Fear be gone. And live by faith. Faith in me. So this past week, I, I looked throughout Scripture, and do you know that the most frequent command in the Bible turns out to be, what, what do you think? Okay, now you're doing June for me, okay? Let me get to this point, okay? Right. Yes, it's, it's fear not, all right? But, but I had some other stuff here. Like, be good, be, be holy, don't sleep during your pastor's sermon. No, it is fear not not. Don't fear. Do you know how many times it is listed in the Bible? 365 times. How many days are in the year? Each day of the year, God reminds us, do not be afraid. I've been listening to a song lately, and, and we were going to sing it this, this Sunday, but that's, that's for another Easter. Meg and I have perfected a little bit, so come back in another year or so. But this song has, has really hit home of what we celebrate today, what we celebrate each and every day. It's, it's called King of Kings, and it's an amazing song with with amazing lyrics, and I'll walk you through this song, but, but I invite you as you leave to, 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 today, listen to that song, King of Kings. For the song starts off in, in, in darkness, reminding us that this world that we live in, it's fallen, we are filled with, with sin, and we are looking for light. We are waiting for the light to come and bring us home. And this song kind of reminds us then of, of what Good Friday was all about, as we had that service of, of darkness, of what sin has done for us. How sin can, can kind of lead us to, to think that there is no hope. Think that Satan has, has won, has taken control, and and then fear starts to come into our lives. Thinking that there is nothing that will get us out of this darkness. But the song then continues. and It states that from heaven, from Christ's eternal throne, he comes down to this darkened world to be that light. He comes from his throne on high to a cradle in the dirt. And so why did he come? Well, he came to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. He did it all for us, not despising the cross. And we saw on Friday what Christ had to endure with the beatings and the crucifixion and to lay up there for six hours trying to breathe in agony and in pain. But he knew that is where he had to go and he did not despise it. For he knew what was on the other side. He knew that his death would bring about salvation to the whole world. And for our sake, each and every one of us, Christ goes to the cross for us. 
And that morning, this, this morning, this glorious morning, he rose. The storm was way, rolled away for good, and he had conquered sin and death. And the Lamb of God had restored it all. And the church was born to share the news. And June, do not ever stop telling the story like you did this morning. Okay? When someone tells you that there's nothing in the Easter egg, you tell them that's why the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. Okay, so June, don't get a big head right now, but I'm going to tell the congregation something, okay? Be like June. <laughs> Be like a child. What a glorious morning we are celebrating. Christ is alive. And because Christ is alive, one day I'm going to see my father-in-law again. I'm going to see my grandparents. I'm going to see each and every one who has died and now rest with Jesus. Because of this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the stone is rolled away and there is no one there. And that's because Jesus has conquered sin. He has conquered death. The fear that we live in has been destroyed. We live with the excitement of June Hansen on Easter morning. Each and every day. Our Redeemer is alive. And the church is born. He has restored us. All the sin of the world. All the sin that you have committed. And you will commit when you leave here and you start thinking about the masters instead of Jesus as alive. Not that your pastor will do that. Those things have been destroyed. And that's what Good Friday was all about. When we see our Savior on the cross and darkness has come across this earth. And, and, and Christ cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? Well, he left Jesus because he loves each and every one of us. And he wants to bring us home. And so hold on to that. Don't live in fear. But hold on to what the angels said and, and what the, the women witness as they see Jesus. And one day we will see Jesus as well. And I hope that day is, is soon. I'm excited to see my Savior and be with Him. Be in a world that is perfect. Be in a world where I get to see my Creator and Savior face to face and sing all of these wonderful hymns for eternity. Stone is rolled away. There's nothing in the Easter egg. Can you say it a little louder, June? Tell everyone. He is alive, right? Can we get them excited? Be excited, brothers and sisters. This is a glorious day, but this is a day that we should celebrate each and every day of our lives. Christ is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue by having the choir come and join us um, and sing the beauty of the cross.
I invite you to stand if you are able as we join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. And we confess, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I believe in one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join together in the prayers of the church. And let us pray. Living Lord Jesus, on the first day of the week, you rolled away the stone from the tomb and opened up life for all who believe. Roll away the stones of fear in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, replace our fear with bold faith, a faith that looks at challenges, pain, setbacks, and heartaches, and gives it all to you. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, release us from the prisons of fear that we might be free. Set free all who live in bondage to anxiety, chained to addiction, and enslaved to evil. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord Jesus, you address the sick and the suffering with your grace to heal, relieve, and restore. Give to all the sick, the wounded, the grieving, and the dying the full measure of your healing grace to support them in their need. And we especially pray for those that are in our Trinity family, that are listed in our bulletin, and those whom we now lift up to you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, living Lord Jesus, you bid us to go forth confidently with Easter faith and a deathless and endless hallelujah. We will do just that in the power of your Holy Spirit and as a witness to the world. Lord, in your mercy, living Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week for Vicki, Kurt. Levi, Tony, Renee, Adeline, Zoe, Nikki, Lakin, Lynn, Bryn, and Harper. We also thank you for your continued blessings upon marriages, especially to Lauren and Sandy and Lucas and Kami, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Lord, in your mercy, grant this, O Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. During this time, we offer up our offerings. Uh, if you didn't place uh, your offering in uh, when you came in, they were located at the exit rows. We will have an offering plate up here. Uh, we also have uh, a, uh, something new uh, for our visitors and guests and for people who just want to uh, do something uh, tech-savvy. We have a, a, a QR code. I think it's our next slide. Am I right? No. That's next week. Okay. Well, um, if you want one, there are, they're located uh, kind of as you exit here. Uh, you can just snap it. Uh, it takes you to a, a, a link tree, uh, and it has ways to, to give electronically through your phone uh, as well. Uh, but 
don't feel obligated. If you are a visitor, uh, we want you to be just a guest and to hear uh, the, the power of, of God's word um, as we speak it here. Uh, but if uh, you would like to give, uh, certainly there's other ways to do that. And so uh, during this time, we just ask that you reflect on our offering Easter video. But if you condense the meaning of Easter down to one simple truth, you'll always end up with three words. Over and over and over again, three words. He is risen. Jesus of Nazareth is God in the flesh, full of grace, full of truth. He lives a perfect life in a broken world. He's crucified, dead, and buried. But the grave cannot possibly contain him. He is risen. Risen as the conquering and victorious king over sin and death. Risen to invite all people back into the abundant life their souls have been longing for all along. Fast forward 2,000 years. Those three words that have literally changed history now have the power to change us. For those who are lonely and full of doubt, He is risen. For those with songs of praise and for those with cries of lament, He is risen. For the seeking, the broken, the anxious, the depressed, the successful, the young and the old, it's the presence of the risen Jesus that we encounter as the only one who can possibly carry us through it all. And God's priceless gift of salvation resurrects our own lifeless hearts and offers hope to a world that's dying for the same rebirth. All because in the fullness of time, God wrapped himself in human flesh, stepped out of eternity, and chose a tomb outside of Jerusalem to communicate one simple and abiding truth. He is risen. And those three words have the power and the glory to change every waking. I invite the congregation to please stand if you are able. And let us join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in saying our sending prayer. Be reminded that today we celebrate Easter, and we hear the wonderful news that, that Christ has come to, to die for us, to give us forgiveness, and give us eternal life. And so as we pray this, we pray that, that God would work through us to, to share that message, the message that, that June has told us that the tomb is empty and that Christ has defeated death and given us life. And so as we pray this prayer, I think of someone who could, has fear in their lives and, and needs to hear those powerful words that, that he has risen, he is not here, and he has done this all for you. And so we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul for me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. And now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so we sing our final hymn. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen.
to be seated for just a couple announcements. Just a reminder that following service, uh, you don't have to leave. You can go right into the fellowship hall. We have Easter breakfast for you, uh, so come and join us uh, for that. Uh, this is being uh, put on by, we have two mission groups that are uh, going out this summer, one to Canada, and then uh, my daughter is going to Africa uh, this summer, and so uh, this is just a free will donation to help support uh, those two mission trips. And so come join us for some food and fellowship and just rejoicing uh, that Christ is risen. Uh, also, uh, let's do, 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 do. Um, that is about, about it that, that I have. Oh, women, uh, you are invited. There's an LWML uh, workshop, uh, a love workshop, uh, this coming Saturday in, uh, in Barnesville at St. John's uh, Lutheran Church, uh, just kind of talking about uh, God's love and, and light uh, for us. And so that is April 15th, uh, this coming Saturday from 8.30 to 2.30 uh, down in uh, Barnesville. And so come and join us for that. All right, and just a couple other things to remind you about. Um, women, our monthly dinner and service project is next Monday. Um, so you're welcome to join us at 6 p.m. for dinner. And then at 6.30, we are going to meal prep some meals for the Moorhead School Food Pantry. Um, youth, we are meeting next Sunday for an escape room um, from 1 to 3.30. So if you'd like to join us for that, please sign up on the youth room door. That is all. And if you purchase an Easter lily, uh, you can grab that. Um, I apparently have had a, a plant in my office for about a year that, that Maggie told me is dead. Um, so I will not keep these alive very well. So please take them and, and, and keep them alive because uh, Christ keeps me alive and I can't keep his creation alive apparently. So um, take that if you would like and just enjoy today. Uh, take that message that the tomb is empty. Uh, the fear is gone. And Christ is risen. And so share that with the world. Share that with, with your family. But most importantly, take that to heart of knowing what Christ has done for you. And so have a glorious rest of your day. And as you leave, uh, you can hear uh, that, that song that I talked about in my sermon, King of Kings. Uh, and so as we process out um, and look forward to greeting you in the back, uh, listen to those words uh, of what Christ has done for us. <laughs>